right, so we're going to head uh, up into the Slovenian Alps, basically, via this other lake, and of course the traffic should then thin out. If it doesn't, it's going to be a very long day. Oh, that's better, a bit more speed, a little bit of airflow through the jacket, just what we need. And a cracking view of the foothills of the Alps here now. These are getting properly serious. The GoPro always flattens down mountains, but trust me, these look pretty impressive. The sheer faces here actually on the mountains remind me a little bit of uh, the Dolomites, which aren't that far away to be fair. Just across the border in Italy. So one of the highlights of today's riding is going to be um, riding up to the highest point in Slovenia. And there's, uh, sounds like another pass up there. But it's only open at certain times of year, obviously because of uh, snow and ice normally. And at the moment, Pete was saying that it's open uh, up to a certain point and then the very top part is uh, technically closed, but you can pass sort of at your own risk, so. <laughs> I'm starting to feel a little bit anxious about that bit. <laughs> On a bike that's slightly too heavy and slightly too big for me. But we'll see how that goes a bit later, so that's gonna be, uh, that's gonna be fun. In the meantime though, check out these views. I can't believe how green it is here, it's just, wow, that water is crystal clear down there. Given it's so hot and there's so much greenery, it just doesn't compute in my mind. Just beautiful. Oh, by the way, just want to remember, <laughs> if you do fancy coming on uh, one of these trips, they're starting with uh, CM Tours Slovenia, which is the sister company to Canary Motorcycle Tours, who you uh, will have heard of before if you've been a subscriber of my channel for a while. So they're starting summer 2020. Check out their website. I'll uh, put a link below. But the uh, thing you need to know is uh, if you mention TMF when booking, you'll get yourself a 10% discount. So that's about uh, 120 quid off, I think. Wow, look at that reflection. And you too could be riding these roads. And I tell you, I can't recommend it enough. It's been absolutely beautiful. Some of the best riding I've ever done, without doubt. And I'm not just saying that. It really is cracking over here. And uh, two nicer people you won't meet than uh, Martin and Joy. They look after you really well. You'll be fed well. The people are super friendly here. The hotel's in a good spot in terms of coming out and seeing all of Slovenia. It's perfectly comfortable and Momo will do you amazing food there as well. There's an awful lot to see here. It's one of those countries that gets a little bit overlooked, I think. I think Croatia's done a good job of setting up its tourist industry and Slovenia maybe not so much, but uh, from what I've seen, it's absolutely cracking. So yeah, don't forget, mention TMF when booking, get yourself a discount. And uh, there we go. So that's the advert owner. But I'm hoping it's not... Uh, I'm not having to sell it too much to you because this scenery just speaks for itself, doesn't it? Absolutely gorgeous. Just trying to drink in all this because uh, just in uh, two days time I shall be back home in Blighty where I know the weather is horrible. Not particularly warm and throwing it down with rain. I just spoke to somebody actually back at home said it was, uh, it was raining which always makes you feel better, doesn't it? I'm filming this in August so it shouldn't be raining in Blighty. They're just going through a particularly bad storm at the moment. But this, I'm told, is fairly typical weather for Slovenia this time of year. Absolutely perfect weather for biking through. So drinking it in, because it may be a while before I see stuff like this again. I must say, I do like the pace of this tour. The riding's not so manic that you don't get to enjoy the views. You can take them in. I like to stop and take pictures and you know enjoy the views. That's what touring a motorbike is all about for me. It's not just about hacking around corners. I can, I can hack around corners at home if I want to. But the stuff I can't do at home is taking these sorts of views. So what's the hurry? Well, this is very much a first for me. There's been a few of these on this trip. I've uh, been lucky enough to go to the Alps many times, usually skis in hand. Very rarely do I come to the Alps in the summer and I've certainly never been to the Slovenian Alps before. And very lovely it is too. I imagine there's some cracking walks and things to do around here. Some of these mountains have still got snow on the top. It's incredible. Properly high, some of these. Another cracking church there. Just coming through this little alpine town now. 
If I was just uh, transported here and people asked, where are you? I don't think I would have said Slovenia. I would have said somewhere like, well, Austria or Italy. It's got exactly that same vibe, but it's such better value for money. We need to get Slovenia on the tourist map. It's been overlooked. It's got so much to offer. I shall definitely be back, 100%. Very clever move by Pete there, he was leading and the uh, traffic split us up at the roundabout so he did a lap so we could all regroup again. Nice move. Now as I said before, the GoPro won't show it, but the mountains ahead at the top there are all still, well actually it's above the tree line, it's grey granite rather than snow I'm looking at I think. But they do look majestic. That is the word. Well, this is actually only my third day of riding here, but uh, the contrast, the different sorts of scenery that uh, you've got in a relatively short space is just incredible here. Cool campsite, if that's your sort of thing. Of course, another thing you could do if you wanted is ride your own bike down here. It is uh, effectively the same as riding to northern Italy in terms of distance. As I say, it just adjoins Italy in the north, depending on where you're starting off in the UK, uh, it will take you two to three days to get here, I would have thought, riding through Europe, and again, depending on what route you do. And then you could hook up with the guys and do a couple of days of touring, lead touring, so they can show you all these hidden gems that I've been seeing. They're completely open to uh, people bringing their own bikes down if they want to. Or of course you can do like I do, or did, jet in, borrow their bikes, do a bit of riding and then jet home again. And uh, everything is uh, taken care of for you. Either way, if you can, do get Slovenia on your itinerary. I think because it's uh, because of its um, past, you know, being past part of Yugoslavia and then us having images of wars and things, probably all misguided, certainly in my case, and it being former Eastern Bloc, these countries over to the right-hand side of Italy, certainly in the UK, I think we've kind of blocked off as too hard and difficult. But they're not these days. They're properly in the EU, they're completely civilised countries. They are not difficult to get around at all. Everybody speaks English. Great value for money as well. There is no reason why you shouldn't come here. So for those following on the map, we've just uh, come out of the town of Kamya. I think it's, spe it's spelt K-A-M-N-J-E. Not entirely sure how you pronounce that. But again, a lovely little alpine spot. Oh, here we go. We're just coming into Poya, maybe? Polje? P-O-L-J-E. Again, embarrassing myself with the pronunciations. Very difficult for uh, English-speaking people to wrap their tongues around some of these words which makes it all the more impressive that the uh, the locals have such a great grasp of English which presumably is just as hard for them to learn as it is for us doing it the other way around. Getting a little bit busy through here again. Okay we just come up to the next lake and it's got uh, dead busy again because of course height of tourist season and a popular spot. It's the only problem with these beautiful places isn't it? Everybody else wants to see them too. Cute bridge. Cool. Photographic opportunity if ever I saw one. Okay, some more snappage there. Lovely spot. Right. So we're now going to wend our way up to get some height into the Alps proper, as it were. And this is uh, the start of what's called the Vesich Pass. Thank you, sir. Which, according to Pete Dura, is the highest pass in Slovenia. So uh, I'm not sure what's in store in terms of uh, frightening factor <laughs> but we shall see certainly looks very impressive from the bottom here
quite a bit of road works going on through some of these little uh, towns that we come through, these little alpine spots. So I assume that's because it has to be done this time of year, because in the winter, of course, it's all ice and snow. I wouldn't fancy working on these roads in this temperature. There are worse places to be working now. Okay, this is more like it. Check this out. This is your classic glacial valley, straight out of my old uh, O-level geography book. U-shaped sides. Thousands of years ago, this was sculpted out by ice scraping its way through. What a corker. Some rather lovely chalets overlooking the valley up there to my left. Very nice indeed. These sort of places always seem appealing to me because I think, oh, in the summer they're beautiful. In the winter they're beautiful, with the snow you get to go skiing as well, how far is all that? Of course, what you don't bargain is, in the spring and autumn, <laughs> they tend to be a bit grey and miserable, is my guess. It's the transition between the uh, beautiful snowy season and the beautiful sunny season that ain't so beautiful, and there's quite a bit of that, I guess. Right, where are we going now? What a splendid little place. Check out those balconies. Somebody likes their flowers. So for those following on the map, Jerika is where we are. Again, no doubt my pronunciation is incorrect, but it's J-E-R-E-K-A. -E and yet another of those amazing churches that I'm just becoming blase to because they are seemingly everywhere here. And they're just so unlike anything you see at home. This is real chocolate box stuff. Okay, it feels like we're in our uh, climb proper now. Some real tight hairpins coming up here, first gear jobs. Won't be a problem for Martin and Joy who are behind me now. This is their uh, bread and butter in Grand Canaria. But I'm an amateur at this sort of thing. <laughs> Particularly on a big old heavy bike like this. Where's my Honda CRF when I need it? But it's worth it for these views. I'm just going to keep an eye on the temperature as we climb up here, just to see how much it does drop. It's 28 degrees at the moment according to the onboard uh, temperature gauge. Let's see if there is a big difference this time of year. This is a big old bike to get around these hairpins. Wow, the view off to my left is amazing. Occasionally you get a glimpse through the trees. Unfortunately there's just not a clearing at the moment to see it, but uh, we may get a glance. Is this a gap coming up? No, maybe not. Now that's the hard way of doing it. Good on you, sir. Well, how lovely is this? A little respite from the uh, hairpins. We've come into this little verdant area. How are we doing on temperature? 26 now, so we've lost two degrees. I'm surprised it's not more actually, because we've climbed a fair old way. Just perfect biking weather though. Okay, so I think that's the, uh, the pass done. 25 degrees up the top here and uh, Again, Peter was explaining, this is kind of like a mesa, a plateau up here. So you stay quite high as you track along through the forested part at the top of the pass. Right, what does this signage say? Anything I can possibly make sense of. Obscena Bonage, tourist region. That'll work. So one or two rocks strewn over the road every now and then, so you've got to keep an eye open. There's quite a lot of logging activity and occasionally you go past bits that's got some sort of bits of bark and stuff laying across the road, so always on the lookout ahead just in case you hit a corner with something loose on it. But generally a cracking road, look at this. And according to that sign, an 18% downslope. So quite a hill this one. Wow, what a road.
this is what we like. Let's look at this road. You couldn't come up with a better one, could you? Fabulous. This road just keeps getting better and better. Just when you thought it couldn't. The views to my left are just stunning. I can't spend too much time looking at them. Because <laughs> there's no straight bits of road. Oh, there's a bit. Well, once again, Peter's pulled one out of the bag for today's riding. That was absolutely beautiful through there. Another road, another verdant valley. It seems it's one of these uh, places, one of these countries where it doesn't really matter where you go, you can't go wrong. Every road's a winner. This one's got a bit of, uh, I don't know, Glencoe with trees about it. And you don't often ride down Glencoe when it's 30 degrees, do you? <laughs> oh, 29 now, just went down one. Just looking up to the mountains to my left. And uh, you can see where a glacier used to be on the very top. You probably can't see it on the GoPro. But uh, I can clearly see the path of a glacier, but there is no ice or snow up there now. I wonder if that's a recent loss. And it's one of those global warming things. It does look like it's fairly freshly cut through, as it were. Who knows? Or maybe I'm just being paranoid. Beautiful countryside, nonetheless. Another massive valley. Just look at the size of this. Well, this ride along this valley floor has turned into a beautiful ride, actually. Well, it's quite a major road compared to the ones that we have been doing. And relatively busy, although, as you can see, not an awful lot of traffic. But it's just these big sweepers as you come down these spectacular mountain ranges. It's just absolutely gorgeous. You could ride like this all day. Mountain peaks don't come much more spectacular than that, do they? Craggy looking. Incredible. One thing this bike is good for is the standing up position is nice and balanced. It's great just to stretch your legs. Lunch stop. It's an interesting colour choice, if I may say. Is it, have you got a bit of a military thing going on? I, I, I fancied it, so as soon as I saw it, I thought, you yeah, know, that's just me then. Mm. And I don't like it, I wanted to get it sprayed black. Fair enough, yeah, black. You can't go wrong with black. No. Right, what do you think the specialist food is in here then? Perfect. Oh, there's a bit of a garlic whiff off there. I'll get you with a bit of cheese hanging out your mouth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that was a splendid little lunch stop again in a little pizza place there. First pizza, actually, of the trip, which is uh, unlike me. So now what we're doing is just heading off to the uh, petrol station because I've got a flashing empty again. And I'd have all sorts of uh, fuel range anxiety. Uh, and then I think we're going to skirt into uh, Italy. We're going to uh, flirt with a bit of Austria uh, and some lovely roads that the guys know there before we head back. So it's going to be another mammoth day. The uh, rides that we've done today, I think I mentioned earlier, normally would be all tied up into a two-day trip, so uh, don't be put off by the fact that it sounds like I'm doing long days. In the real thing, it would be considerably shorter. Unless, of course, you want to do stupidly long days. Still absolutely cracking weather. The bike is saying 33 centigrade at the moment. Cracking little beauty spot there. That's where we should have had our lunch stop. <laughs> Lots of people actually in the water. How inviting does that look? Oh, nice. Pretty busy down there, but a very lovely spot nonetheless. I can see why it's busy. Plenty of bikers coming down the other way that plainly have made it. No chaps. So it is possible to do a live. Wow, what a majestic view again. Loving that word today, but it 
properly describes what this is like. Right, back into the National Park. Look at that. Right, nothing coming, take it wide. This is getting crazy. Surely we must be at the top soon. He says, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we're coming to the peak. Temperature up here, 25 then, so we drop five degrees. So this must be the top of the pass then. Seems to be where all your hardcore walkers and cyclists are going. Wow. This is definitely a wow moment. Now I have a theory that it's actually easier going down those things than it is going up, so uh, hopefully the worst is over, but you never know, do you, with these things. What a place! It's going to be one of those spots where it goes over quite a way, I think. It's not going to go over, huh? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we're all right. It's picking it up again, that's the issue. <laughs> it might be a two-man job. Wow, what amazing views, though, eh? Well, then why do they put cobblestones on the corners? You feel bad on those. Yeah, I know, it was crazy, crazy. Well, that was all quite exciting. Let's just wait for the others to go. There we go. Well, you don't see views like that every day, do you? It's a belter. But a busy little spot as well up there. It's like Lake Bled all over again, but at altitude. So the next pass we do is uh, in Italy, apparently. I'm not sure how we'll, if we'll spot the border very much, it's one of these open ones, so we should just ride through hopefully. But another country to bag by a motorcycle. Oh yes, going down is so much easier than going up. Thank you! Hello sir. Well, it's getting warm again as we get down a bit lower. It's a long way down. So we're wending our way towards Italy still. And uh, the weather looks like it's closing in a bit. It's still really hot at uh, 30 degrees. But not quite as sunny as before, which is a bit of a shame. Hello, what have we got here? Cardboard cutout policeman. Does the job. <laughs> no need to put more police on the street, just make some cardboard ones. Interesting looking place on my right here. Some sort of ex-military installation by the looks of it. World War II perhaps, hello, Sarah on the XR. We've got onto this bit more major road again and, uh, well, hesitate to say it again, but it don't often look like the Dolomites. All right, time for some more staggering views. Just coming up this little road in a bit more of a spirited way, which is all good fun. And more amazing mountains ahead. Road surface on here is a little bit tricky. Nice and grippy, but it is a bit on the bumpy side. <laughs> Check this road out. Well, this wasn't in the program, it's just started to rain a little bit. There's none of that in the forecast, but then uh, we are quite high in the mountains here, and I dare say there's a bit of, uh, oh here we go, look, into Italy in 150 metres. So yeah, I dare say there's a bit of a microclimate going on here. And here's the Italian border. 
which is open <laughs> I'm glad to say Cheerio Slovenia Buongiorno Italia it's nice to be back although if you can sort the weather out for us that would be good I don't know what's going on to my left, but some serious, uh, serious works. Perhaps a build. And then, unfortunately, the uh, SD card failed, and that was the end of my uh, of my recording for the tour. So it came to a bit of an abrupt end. I do apologise about that. Of course, I've got a spare SD card, but it gave me all sorts of uh, technical difficulties, so I wasn't able to get it going again. Didn't miss much. We went for a coffee break, uh, and then we were running out of time, so we just blatted back on the motorway. Uh, but uh, the weather did get better, and it turned out to be a lovely evening, so we had a, a nice ride home, actually. Anyway, that's it for this particular tour. I hope you've uh, enjoyed that. I've had an absolute whale of a time here in Slovenia. It's been a real pleasant surprise. I'm now at uh, Zagreb Airport, which, as you can see, is absolutely incredible. Incredible. Uh, everything here just works so well. It's a great place to visit, really easy. You could ride here on your own bike if you wanted. It's just, uh, Slovenia is just at the top of Italy, basically. So you could come here uh, yourself, or indeed you could uh, hook up with my pals from CM Tours uh, Slovenia. Check out the website below, I'll put a link there, um, and uh, come and give them a look. You'll have a great time. They, um, Martin, enjoy look after you like uh, you wouldn't believe you'll have a lot of fun we've had a lot of laughs and it's been great and uh, also i want to say thank you very much indeed to momo the proprietor of the hotel great meeting you and riding with you and thank you for all the cooking and the help and uh, of course pete sometimes dave thank you very much indeed really great fun meeting you we had a lot of laughs and uh, hopefully we'll get to ride again at some point in the future all righty that's it then for this uh, little tour series there will be another one coming along at some point oh don't forget by the way if you do book um, cm tour slovenia then mention that you saw them on tmf and you'll get a uh, 10 percent discount which is worth about 120 quid so uh, that's well worth doing. Alrighty that's it for this time and uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Till then this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.